Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to create a geometry node group that helps keep hair above the surface of the object you're sculpting hair on. Since that functionality isn't available yet in the new hair grooming tools in Blender 3.3 beta. While this isn't foolproof, it does work pretty well. So let's jump right into it. Here I've got a default cube that I'm going to add a new empty hair object to. And to that hair object, I'll add a node tree. We'll go into sculpt mode and add a few hairs. There we go, very punk rock. Now the idea behind what we're doing is checking to see if a control point of our curve is below the surface of our object. We're going to do that by checking the nearest surface point of our object. We'll then test the position of our point compared to the normal of that position on the object. If we think of this as the side view of our object, and this as the normal of that position. We'll say that this point is the nearest point to our curve. And so then we'll add the normal at that position to that position, giving us this vector. Now let's say that this is our curve and this is our control point. If we look at this vector, taking the dot product between this red vector and this blue vector would give us a negative number because they're facing in opposite directions. That means that this control point is below the surface here. What we'll do in a case like this is simply move this point here. Since we'll possibly be moving the position of our points, we'll add a set position node. We need to determine the point on the sphere, so we'll need an object info node. And we'll tie the object to our input so we can select it from our modifier stack here. We'll want the relative position. Now from this object, we need to transfer an attribute. And the attribute we want to transfer from the nearest face interpolated is the position. So we'll add a position node. The type of a position node is a vector. So we'll attach that here. We now have the, the position of the closest point to our control point on the object. For the moment, that's where we want our hairs to be placed. So we'll simply attach that here. We'll select our sphere. Now it seems like all of the hairs gone away, when in actuality it's all been collapsed down onto the surface of the sphere. So the next thing we need to do is select only the points underneath the surface that we want to move. We said we were going to do this using the normal at the closest position on the object. So we'll add an input normal node and transfer that attribute as well. Now to get the normal point that we want to compare to, we need to add the normal to the position on the mesh. So point A is the position on the mesh and vector B is the normal vector. So we'll add the normal vector B to the position A. We can do that very simply with a vector math node. Now we need to determine the point we're going to compare to. If our hair comes down like this, and this is our control point, the position of our control point is based off of the world origin. So it's this vector, which is not what we want to compare to. We want to compare to this vector. We can get this vector by subtracting the point A from point P on our curve. We'll duplicate this position node and bring it over. We'll plug it into this add node and change it to subtract. So point P minus point A is going to give us this vector we'll call Q. So now it's vector B and vector Q that we want to compare with the dot product. If this dot product is less than zero, that means that point P is on this side of the face of the mesh. If it's positive, it means it's over here somewhere. So we'll add a compare node less than. So if the dot product is less than zero, we want to move the points of our hair. Since all of the points of the hair are already on the outside of the mesh, they're not gonna be changed from where we originally put them. However, if we go into sculpt mode, and start combing these down, you'll see that they start to connect to the surface instead of going under.
However, having them go straight to the surface is a little too close. So we're going to want to add some padding. We'll want the padding to be in the direction of the normal at each point of the face. So we can simply scale the normal down and then add that to the position we're setting here. We'll duplicate one of these vector math nodes and set it to scale. We'll take a copy of our transferred normal. We'll duplicate this scale and change it to add and we'll add it to this position. Now, that's way too much, but you'll see if we bring the scale down, we can adjust how close or how far away it keeps those points from the mesh. I'll connect this scale to my group input. So now as I comb the hair, you'll see that it stays to the outside of the object. One thing to keep in mind is that the original control points of our hair curves are not being changed. So if we deactivate this modifier, you'll see that they sink down to their actual positions. So one thing you may want to do with this node group is add it to your hair, do your sculpting, and then apply it. That will remove it from the stack. However, now the actual control points are at these positions and you can keep tweaking your hairstyle from here. You can always add it back in While it's not perfect, it can help quite a bit until these features are added to the hair grooming system in the new Blender 3.3 beta. I hope this works for you, and I hope it helps you create some cool hairstyles. As always, I hope my videos are helping inspire you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.